everybody. Today we're going to talk about the Dalcon Shield as an example of white collar crime. And this particular example of white collar crime does have a little bit of an um, adult theme to it in that we're going to be talking about an intrauterine device um, and there will be pictures of uteri and the actual IUD device. And so just so you guys are aware when you're watching this and uh, when you're watching this that this might not be the most suitable lecture for um, children or for public consumption in the strictest sense. So what is the Dalcon Shield? The Dalcon Shield was basically this intrauterine device pictured here that um, was inserted in women as a form of birth control. Uh, specifically, uh, the way that um, intrauterine devices used to work back then was you see these little arms here that secure it in the uterine wall, and it used to also kind of irritate the uterine lining, which made it hard for a fertilized egg to actually implant in the uterus and grow into a full child. And that's basically how this intrauterine device worked. You can see here in the picture on the right, it actually inserted in um, the uterus. The main basic issue with this Dalcon shield specifically was this retraction string. Obviously, um, you know, it, whenever you insert a device into somebody, it needs to be removed. And so there was this um, string here that was uh, attached to the shield in order to be able to um, uh, pull it out uh, and um, for women who decided they wanted to get pregnant in the future or, or some other um, issues with it. So the Dalcon Shield was made by A.H. Robbins, and this company um, be, uh, began uh, production of this new, um, exciting product that was modern and superior to other forms of birth control. It was second generation and safe as this new form of birth control. You didn't need to um, worry about uh, uh, taking a pill at the same time every day. You didn't need to worry about hormones. This was a device that was very, very safe. However, Worldwide, this device actually injured numbers in the tens of thousands of women. Nearly every single woman who had this inserted suffered from pelvic inflammatory disease. 18 died in the U.S., and most women were impaired or it either impaired or destroyed the ability to have children. It completely sterilized women. In some cases, it didn't work when as many as 5% of women got pregnant. And, despite, and this was despite advertisements that the numbers were around 1%. 60% of these women who conceived actually also lost the baby, and 15 of these women died from septic abortions. So what really was the issue? Well, we've already talked about that, that string, and I mentioned that string was the issue. Basically what happened was A.H. Robbins decided to uh, you know, product test this, and they initially made a monofilament string that hung out of the device. The problem was during uh, coitus, uh, men were complaining that that monofilament string, which was basically fishing wire, kept kind of poking them, and it was not a pleasurable experience with the women. So what A.H. Robbins did was change that device from a monofilament string to more like a twine or a rope so that it was soft, flexible, and the men couldn't even feel it there um, during th their uh, encounters. Um, the... The problem with that, though, is that uh, this, there's a you know wall between the uterus and the uh, vagina, um, and and a, a, uh, a for lack of better verbiage, I suppose a a barrier there known as the cervix. We're all familiar with that. That keeps the vaginal environment that is not sterile. That's kind of the doorway between the the vaginal um, canal and the uterus. The uterus being a sterile environment. With a string there, right, for, for those of you, um, and pardon the, I guess, crude analogy, but ha that have ever had a shoelace fall into a puddle of water, you know that that shoelace immediately sucks up all sorts of moisture onto the rest of the shoelace. The same basic thing was happening from the vaginal canal to the uterus where that string became kind of a highway of sorts that allowed bacteria and infection to move up into the uterus. And so it... Um, therefore, provided kind of a breeding ground for the sterile environment to get infected. In 1974, the FDA asked Robbins to stop sales of this product, but Robbins did not stop sales till as late as 1980. Uh, the judge who worked the Dalcon Shield cases described um, this device as a deadly depth charge in women's wombs, ready to explode at any time. And so the question really became, how did this deadly depth charge actually get there? 
Well, the typical kind of pattern or MO for the Dalcon Shield was that individuals had trust in their doctors for safe birth control. Doctor, what do you recommend? The doctor trusts the manufacturer who advertises that this is the second generation, this is safe, this has been product tested, even though none of that stuff is true. So the doctor trusts the manufacturer and then implants the IUD. When a patient then gets sick or has problems, the doctor misdiagnoses the problem because um, they don't really understand that the shield is unsafe. And in fact, and this obviously reeks of sexism, oftentimes the doctors claim that the cause is more of promiscuous lifestyle amongst women than it is the actual shield and that they need to leave the shield in place because of this promiscuous lifestyle which then has, leads these women to, to trust their doctors, leaving the shield in place, and the infections get so bad that it causes uh, women to lose the ability to give birth or these women actually die. A.H. Robbins' company knew of these potential harms caused by the shield, but they refused to recall the product. And a, uh, a quote by um, somebody says, it, 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 and, and by a, a shield user that... Um, that suffered um, from this faulty design and this faulty product says it's worse than an abortion. They took away the right of someone to decide to have children, losing the ability to choose whether I wanted a family. That was the hardest thing for me to get over. And so you can see where this, this person has said, you know, it's not even like, you know, in, in an abortion, at least you have the choice. They chose that I was going to never be able to have kids again. A.H. Robbins even claimed that should a woman become pregnant, there was no need to remove the shield as it would be gently pushed aside by the uterus. And so A.H. Robbins was so confident in the shield's abilities, right, and, and so confident in the design that um, some children were even born with and formed around the Dalcon shield. So during depositions, executives for Robbins claimed to have no knowledge of the dangers of the shield and didn't care to do any research to test its effectiveness or risks. When asked if the idea that Robbins was paying out over $4.6 million in damages caused any curiosity to the executives at all, whether they should be testing it, whether there's any problems here, you guys have paid out almost $5 million in damages because of this faulty design. Has that raised any red flags? The executive said, no, it hasn't. However, as these damage awards started mounting, um, uh, and, and well, I beg your pardon, as, as because the um, company didn't really see any problems with this. There was no warning issued to the women wearing the shield uh, from Robbins until years later. So they stopped making the shield in 80, but it wasn't until 1984 that they even issued a warning. Um, and sales of the products, be, so that was 10 years later, right? You can see the dates right there. The sale of the products stopped in 74, and it wasn't until 1984 that they even issued um, the warning. So 10 years later. Um, However, the product to date still has not been officially recalled, and A.H. Robbins has gone out of business, which has left most of the settlements unpaid. Further, A.H. Robbins, because they never recalled it, had all these products lying around, didn't really know what to do with the products. So what they ended up doing then was donating them overseas to South America and Africa as foreign relief aid in the form of free birth control to women in South America and Africa. And ended up being able to write off all of those products that they made as a tax-deductible um, charitable contribution. And so really the number of deaths because of this Dalcon Shield is probabilistically significantly higher. And there are a lot of women in South America and Africa that have probably died as a result of these Dalcon Shields being sold um, or donated worldwide. And so this is just another kind of example of a a questionable product that is being um, made that was designed and that the executives knew was bad, but yet they chose to do nothing about it. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below and I will respond to it as soon as I can.